Hello and welcome to Fancy of the Geeks and welcome to another Warhammer Quest video. In this video we're actually going to go through some of the extras that are out there for Warhammer Quest, so if you haven't seen them. So some of the extras we've got and a couple of the ones we don't. Um, and some of the ones we got with the main game but I didn't want to just make that video super long like some of the videos have done. So this is an extra one, so bonus video time. So I just want to show you some of the stuff we got with it first. So we got some badges. Yeah, really interesting. Badges. <laughs> so I was like, what? Badges. Yeah, so we got the warrior priest and we got the chieftain, which is cool. Mm -hmm. uh, we also got this token, which is a kind of a plastic token of the rune marked player. It's like so it replaces a poke chip. It's like a poke chip. Uh, it was limited to I think ten. I think they only had ten in games which were pressed and so I don't know if there's any left, but if you're nearby and you want one, go and get it. It's a plastic solid plastic poke chip which kind of replaces the, uh, the 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 um, cardboard one, which is in the box, is really it's really quite durable. That one. it's cool. Also, we got ourselves some of these, which are just blurb cards uh, with the pictures on the other side, the artwork for the box. Each one just says a little bit about each character from it. So we've got the Mist Weaver, the Doom Seeker, other chieftain. Stormcast Eternal, Mr. Shard, and the Warrior Priest. But we also have the foil cards. So here they are. And I've not taken them out of the packet yet, so this is a little bit of an unboxing. I don't know why my voice went like that. I think it's a <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I think it's Tazinj playing with the, the pitch. Um, so there we go. So these are the foil cards. Well, we were lucky to get mm. these because there were only four in store. Yeah. So they're the same sort of flimsiness, shall we say? Oh, <laughs> same sort of card. Same sort of card. So. It's quite... So we've got to be careful with these. They're not heavy, durable card, but they are very cool foil cards if you look at them. Cool. So we'll probably be using the other ones. And then we have... Is that a different image on the back? Is that the same image? I can't remember. I didn't look at the Warrior Priest image, to be fair. Um, there you go. These are the images. Yeah, the same images. Yeah. So we have the Tenable Shard. The Miss Weaver, Sire, all in this really cool sort of foil. I like that actually. That's pretty funky. Uh, the Doom Seeker and the Night Quester. Also, we have pre ordered the extra box uh, because I wanted a Slot Priest anyway and never got one because Claire nicked it. If you saw a previous unboxing video of this Slot Priest and stuff like that. Um, so, this is my chance to get a Slot Priest and Claire's chance to get a Night. Um, Fly one with the phoenix, yes, and then evade me because that was mine. So, these are the cards for them, which I've pre ordered. Which we'll, we'll do an unboxing of next week, or at least we'll we'll do the two characters which we haven't already done on previous videos. Um, we've got the slot priest who is one from a previous video, but now we have the foil card for it, which is awesome. We have the Alec Rune Master who is a model I don't have yet, so we'll, we'll do a little bit of an unboxing of him next week. And we have this is each Sorcerer Lord. There he is. Yeah, that's an older model. Uh, I don't have that one. That's one of the ones I didn't get, so that's quite cool. I got the other guy who's got the staff and stood upright with the horns on his head. This guy's more of a mutant with long legs. Mm. And then we have the Knight Venerator, which is the name I couldn't remember before. But that'll be Claire's to do with what she wants. Cool. So those are the foil cards for next week's. Uh, what? Yeah. I also want to have a look at White Dwarf. So the last week's White Dwarf, just a brief one. If you haven't seen it, uh, basically in this there is just stuff for Age of Sigma. There's a lot of blurb about Warmer Quest. So it's good to try and pick this up if you can. And there's some painting guides in there, which I probably will be using to be fair. Um, and we've got the Age of Sigma. I'll do it in reverse. We've got the Chieftain. Got the Age of Sigma sheets for War Priest, Shard, and Night Quester, all there, and some paint splatter on how to paint the Chieftain there. And a little bit about the game. So that was last week's. This week's. Here we go. So we've got this week's White Dwarf. Just going to zoom out a little bit. So this one, we have the four heroes that we're going to get next week. We have. Um, some blood on them. Not just telling us that's available this week, but we know because we've already unboxed it. 
Uh, paint splatter again for some of the acolytes, that's cool, so a more painting guide. We've got the warrior priest there. Mm. And we've got the some images of the various things. We also have this, which is cool, it's the Lord of Plagues card. So this is, you can just use this in the game, so this is how you can use this model, which is probably one of my favourite models games I've actually ever made. I've got three versions of it. You have actually, yeah. Yeah, two are converted. Um, which you've probably seen on previous videos we've done. Uh, but this is the Lord of Plagues, this is his card. So I will just zoom in so you can see that. So those are the rules. And actually that's all you need to play, that and the model, and you can play. Awesome. Which I like about it actually. Um, here we go. So I can see him being used by me. <laughs> see that being scanned in and photocopied or something. Yeah, I think we will do. And then obviously we've got the Age of Sigmar versions, uh, War Scrolls, for that's an exclusive client as well, I'm not going to pull it out, for all the models. So we had the Thaumaturge there, we've got the Blue Horrors, the Brimstone Horrors, we've got the Xanagors, and we've got the Acolytes, and we have the Familiars here, and the Grox Scotlings there, for use with destruction. You can have them alongside your Orcs, which is awesome. Now we have some more of the painted pictures. That's cool with the books. Got Scaven Death Runners as well. Oh, there's a, I nearly missed them. Scaven Death Runners. <laughs> I nearly missed them. Because they're sneaky. That's what I missed. And some more of the painted models are sure enough what you can do. Obviously, a completely blue acolyte, which looks cool. And I'm really tempted to do that. Actually, <laughs> do you know, I've seen That's them. cool. What have we got there? Oh, red. red. The base of the Blood Angel. Mm. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I like the purple mm. I'm a fan of the purple. Fan of Blood Angels as well to be fair. Got an army upstairs. Uh, so some more on Warhammer Quest. How does that me struggle, but never mind. <laughs> That's gonna help me out. Uh let's keep going. Let's see if there's anything else in it. So just bits about the actual game and what you can do. But we'll get into that in, in the next video we do on this. Um, well, we'll do a playthrough. So that massive fortune at the back, and then some 40k stuff, which we're not interested in 40k. Of course we are. That looks cool. I like that. I've got familiars though. So that was White Dwarf in total. Went right through the whole thing. We're just going to go through the War and Quest bit. So obviously a nice picture on the back of War and Quest. But there we go. So uh, what else am going to do? I'm going to show you. This book, I'm not going to show you the front part of the book or any of the stuff in there which <coughs> I'm not meant to show you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flip round to the back and show you the encounter tables. There we go. So I didn't show you this in the first video because I hadn't had a chance to have a look at it. But these are the encounter tables that you roll on to see what you might have. You've got an inspected events as well. And exotic adversaries, which is why I turned to the back. So in addition to the models you get in the box, you can add other models to your already existing box. Because the rules are in the back. Oh, yeah. It's limited to Tazinch models. Oh. So there's only four. So we have the Herald of Tazinch. We have the Exalted Flamer of Tazinch. I'm doing this backwards so I don't ruin anything, you see. Um, the Flamers of Tazinch, which are there, which is one per person up to maximum of three. And Screams of Tazinch, which again is one per person to maximum of three. So you can add those to your roster of villains. That you can fight against. Um, there's a little bit of blurb about each of those. If you don't know what they are, it tells you though. If you do, you don't need me to read that out to you. Also in this are the actual sheets for the other four that are coming out next week. So you don't need to get the foil cards. You've got them in the book here when you start. All you need is a foil copy, really. Foil copy them and off you go. That is those. So that's what you get in the box set anyway, which I didn't show you. Um, there is one card we don't have, because unfortunately I didn't pre-order the box in time, so I didn't get the Sorcerer card. Uh, I did take a picture of the Sorcerer card, and if this doesn't work, I will I'll just put the picture into the video. I'm not, not really going to get a good picture. But yeah, I took a picture of it on close phone. It's a foil, which is why it's all shiny. Um, but there it is. That is the Battle Mage. Well, I'll try and get that off and superimpose it on the video. So you can get a better look at that. So the last thing I wanted to go through was the app, which 
people may or may not know about. It's been advertised everywhere, so it'll be. I expect you already know about it. I'll show it on the iPad because it's a bit bigger. I'll zoom in. Not that much. So there we go. So this uh, is basically the app. Uh, the app, after going through it, there are some improvements that could be made to the app, um, in my opinion. Uh, what we have, though, is my heroes, which will normally be blank, but I've put a couple of heroes on there. So to add a hero, you go to add hero. And then you have the heroes here. So these are the ones from the box and those extra four ones that are coming out next week. Those are automatically on there. I haven't bought any more. Uh, so this is what you start with. You go onto the hero, it'll give you the hero stats. You click on that, it gives you the hero's weapons. And we have the hero's abilities, uh, talents, shall we say. The, you choose the hero you want. So if you want the chieftain, you press choose. It adds it to your roster of heroes, basically. That's the slaughter priest. The chieftain is there. So... If you want to actually play with these guys, you go back to the beginning, you go to, uh, you can actually also before we do that, you can see my collection, it'll show you what you've got in your collection and give you the details there as well. And you go to shop and you actually buy the uh, extras, but well, I'll show you that at the end. So when you actually go to play, you're given, oh, actually go on the dwarf, it doesn't matter, uh, you're given this sheet, You can, it tells you here where you've got dice. You can click on that, you can allocate your dice if you've rolled them. So if you rolled a 6, you can put a 6 in there. If you've been wounded, you can put a wound counter or a stun counter or you can leave it blank. There we go. That's the rune that the dwarf has. So he's either got it or he hasn't. Uh, you can roll them on here. There's a little roll thing, so you can randomise it. So it'll give you a roll if you don't want to roll the dice. You can actually use the app to do that. And then, of course, here we've got stats there, weapons, traits. And then we have skill cards and treasure cards. So this is the standard deck which is in the game. So the skill cards, what you do, you can either click on that eventually. Come on, here we go. You can choose a card, which means it'll just take you to the card you've chosen. Say if you've just used the deck in the box and you just want to add this to the electronic version of your character, you just go through and you find the one that you've picked, or should I say chosen at random, like chosen for instance. I'll tell you about it there. And you can add that on, uh, or one step ahead, or unstoppable. It tells you there. So if you go back, you can actually also, if you saw it before, draw a random card. They'll do that for you as well. That takes it from the standard deck that comes in the box. Same with the treasure cards. Exactly the same system. This also highlights my first flaw with what I feel is this. The game itself, you could really play it as a single player. It says 2-4 to four in the box. But you can just put the cards in front of you and just play it all four characters quite easily. Everything's in front of you, it's really easy to use. You don't have to refer to the books and stuff. All the rules are there, all the dice are there. They've made it so simple that you could literally play the four characters yourself, or you could play two each, or whatever version you wanted to play. However, this, I am locked into this character. I can't move out of this. I can't go and pick another character. I can't move along to another character without ending the game. So when you end the game, it basically says, did you win or lose? So we say we won, and we go to next, and then it says, allocate yourself the piece of rune. Um, yes, I did. So we go next, and then you gain that one of the eight challenges you need to do, and then you close it. Sorry. It's right in it. So then you go back to the beginning, and you're back here again. You can't switch between heroes mid-game, which seems a bit crazy to me. You, if all they need to do was like the zombie side out is just move to the next player, move to the next player, then move to the adversaries. It would be so simple just to do that. Mm -hmm. And also it would remind you of where you are in a turn. It could keep track of who the runic player is, just like the zombie side app does. You could do all those things and it'd be really handy. Yeah. And then you could just play it on your own. You could have just have that keeping score. Well, we played a, a, play, a 12 player game didn't we using that app. Which you may have seen at War Games and that app was brilliant. It was fab. 12 players just goes through each one and then you can allocate the cards and <coughs> do whatever you want to do with it. Um, mm. I was hoping for the same from this and it's not there. It, no. So you're locked into playing the one <coughs> character. So even if you've bought loads of extra cards you can't use two different ones in the same game. You, you're going to be stuck with the one card. Which gets on to the next part of what I want to talk about on the app. Um, 
these are the actual characters and everything. And the characters, they're 79p each, which, fair enough. I'm not all bothered about that. The bundle deal's 19.99. you do save money. I think if you wanted to buy the 37 characters on here individually, it comes to the 29 pounds something. Mm. I, I worked it out before. Uh, it was nearly 30 quid, basically. And there was about 22 characters I wanted, so it was just as easy to buy the bundle. Uh, the characters, are fine. I'm fine with paying 75p for a character card. It's, I still think it's a bit expensive, but... Uh, Alright, so it's glad you've done the calculation. <laughs> £29, 23p. Yeah, so if you wanted to buy all, all the characters separate, it would be £29, 23p. But at the top, a little bit of a bugbear of mine, is the cards. Now these are skill cards and treasure cards which you can add to basically your game, your version of the game, for yourself. Because they'll only apply to your character which you are using. They are £2.99 each and you get nine cards. That's all you get, nine treasure cards or nine um, skill cards. If they were physical cards, I could add them to the deck. I'd pay two ninety nine for that quite happily. But because they're digital cards, they can only apply to your character that you are playing. Which you can only play one of because the app doesn't let you play multiple characters. In theory, you could use this app to play everybody on the board and just go through, just like in Zombicide, you can go through everybody's actions. But this, you can't. So you'd be buying these just for the single character. So I don't like that, to be honest. I don't like just getting <clears> these nine cards that you can mm. only use on your character. It's, it's a bit pointless. Yeah. I, I don't like that idea. I think I think also think they're expensive for nine cards. If it was a deck of 30 cards, maybe nine. That's a bit stingy uh, for two ninety nine. Yeah, Which definitely. is a digital purchase, we're talking. Yeah, we're not talking an actual card, which has been printed off. For that, yeah, fair enough, but... This is digital. I know there's work I had to go into and everything, but I still just think if that's the case, I would pay two ninety nine if I could apply it to a bunch of characters, not just one. Uh, that's my bugbear with it. The other one, obviously, being you can't have more than one character. The deal, the Mega Bundle deal, is good value. Do save because in total, all these separately are thirty five pounds twenty one pence. The deal's nineteen ninety nine, and you get everything from this. First, I'm sure they're going to add more to it, but you get everything from this first lot. So you get the 37 characters in the two packs. So if that's your thing, if you're only going to play one character, it's probably great. Um, yeah, so you're saving yourself £15.22 yeah. if you get the deal. So you may as well get the deal. It's nearly half price to get the deal. Nearly. Um, so I, I probably will get it, but I'm just a bit reluctant because of those two things. A minor niggle is the fact you can't name your characters. I'd like, because it would give you more of a connection <clears throat> yeah. with them, like you do in role playing as you name your characters. There's nowhere here to actually name your character. Um, you, it does save your progress where you have, so you can keep using different characters. You use multiple characters singly in each adventure, so it'll keep track of loads for you, but you can't use multiples in one adventure. Mm. So I, I couldn't take, like, the. Chief, uh, not the chief, I want to say um, we wanted something from the shop. So I did buy this and I wanted to use uh, Cogsmith because he's a cool. I've got the model. I also wanted to use, say, uh, the Grot Shaman or where is he? He's down here. The Necromancer. Yeah. Yeah. Or oh, I've also got the two okay. New York models as well. The, the Orc Wind I've shared. I mean, this, if I could have used multiple of these, I would have bought one of these today. They lost a the sale because I was like, meh, because I wasn't sure about this, um, to be quite honest. I'm still not sure where I'm going to get it. But say, for instance, I had that and the dwarf, and I wanted to play them both, and Claire wanted to play two models, say, from the box set or whatever. Well, I can't because I would have to have two iPads with two versions of the thing being bought twice on, or I use my phone and the iPad, and I've bought it twice. I'd have to go out and buy for every single version that I wanted. Mm. I don't think that's on, personally. If, if I'm going to pay that, which is fair enough, I want to be able to use them all. I want to be able to use four characters from this list if I want and play on my own. Yeah. Or I want to be able to play four characters from this and play between us. Yeah, so we know and this could it keep, flicks between This could just characters. keep track of everything and say it's writing it all down on pen and paper. Because <clears throat> yeah. the amount of old Warhammer Quest sheets I've found lying around, which got knackered, is, is amazing. So this would keep track of everything and it'd be in one place and you wouldn't lose them. So that's disappointing. 
So overall the app is the most disappointing thing from this so far. That doesn't mean that they can't improve it. Because all the things that we've said, being able to cycle through characters, being able to name characters even, and um, maybe even the cost of these cards. I mean, if you can cycle through the characters and use it for one, the two ninety nine is fine for the cards. If that's only for one character, I think that's expensive. Plus, when you're actually doing the randomness of the cards, if everybody's using their own app and they're not connected, you are end up with the same treasure. Mm. Whereas if you're using the, the actual game, the treasure's limited to one card, which makes mm. sense. But everyone could end up with exactly the same piece of treasure, which is a bit crazy. It could happen. Um, mm -hmm. And obviously, if you've bought more treasure packs, you're going to get better treasure than the other person you're playing with, so they're going to feel a bit left out, maybe. Whereas everything was done from the one app, you don't have to buy it once. I'd be quite happy doing that. And then I'd get the extra cards for the whole crew, the whole team that's playing. Well, it's not everybody that's got an iPhone or an iPad or yeah. an Android phone as well, kind of thing. It's not for everybody. Yeah. Um, and we looked at it on just for we put it on Android as well because it's on your mm -hmm. phone. And it looks pretty much the same. It does look a little bit better on the iOS. Yeah, oh definitely. It's a bit fancier on iOS, but it's tiny little things like um, these little cards are just they aren't cards on some of the things. They're just little uh, purple or blue dots mm. or kind of dots dashes. <coughs> okay. So that's the mm. app. I just wanted to go through that because it's got a lot of potential. And if Games Workshop's listening to this, please can you add those things into the app? I'll get your. <laughs> well, tech we have been to told to contact the yeah, the will. customer service. I'll give them an email. And we're we're say, chatting to you know, um, this, but. the Preston manager yeah. at um, Games Workshop, and he was saying, you know, it's a good idea. Why don't you email the yeah. the customer service? And we're like, yeah, sure. okay. It's not really my idea. Just go and look at the zombie side. <laughs> yeah. App. Do that. That's all you have to do. Do what they do. And then, wait, we'll that, that'd be amazing. So, there we go. So, that's this video done. Uh, those are the extras we've got at the moment. Uh, as we get other extras, we'll do other videos for them. Um, but that's it. So, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. I hope I haven't bored you with me rants. Um, but hopefully, we'll see you again later. So, you take care, guys. See you soon. Bye for now. Bye.